Today's video is all about cross comparing how superwash and non superwash take up the dye and refract color differently. I'm featuring Nomad's Marshmallow Superwash Worsted and their Spark, which is a non superwash organic merino. And we will be doing a resist dye, a speckle dye, and a kettle dye. So if you want to know the entire process with knit swatches, follow along. So first things first, how are we going to keep these straight when we're dying? Because we're going to take off the tags. So I laminate superwash and non-superwash tags in this hot laminator. The cold laminators don't work. The hot laminator will allow your tags to go into a dye bath and not get stained so you can still read them. And I made three for superwash and three for non-superwash. So you will need a superwash and a non-superwash base, a gram scale, some laminated superwash and non-superwash tags, a continuous mist spray mixed with 50-50 citric acid and water, and then we have our dye mixed with fine restaurant grade salt and labeled, that's for speckling, and my favorite black of all time, Pro Chem Wash Fast Acid Black. Very black black. And of course, one of these uh, steel restaurant trays. I prefer the rectangular ones as to the circular ones because you have more dye placement control. So first things first, we're gonna do our resist dyed technique. So we're gonna take our reclosable zip ties. And in this case, I'm going to tie four over the skein on each, and then I'm going to do 4% degree of strength. So since these are 100 grams, that's four grams of dye of black for each for a total of eight grams of dye, citric acid, and I'm going to bring it up to almost boiling before I put these in so the dye doesn't migrate underneath the twists in the time it takes to come up to heat. So we get a nice crisp white resin. Eight grams of dye. About a tablespoon of citric acid. And our dye. For this technique, we want the water pretty high because we want to get even black coverage over everything. So this is an eight inch deep tray and I'm gonna fill the water almost halfway. All right, it's up to temperature. We want it right around 210 degrees, right under boiling, and we want to submerge it as quickly as possible. As you can see, the superwash one took the water immediately, but the non-superwash, see how it's kind of popping up? That is typical. It does not want to take the dye. But if we do this where the yarn's already been wetted out, the dye will migrate underneath the ties and you will not have a crisp resist. Now we're going to leave this here for 22 minutes at 200 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to soak our kettle dye and speckle yarn. As you can see, it kind of floats. So we want to fully wet it out. There's a little bit of synthropol and citric acid in this water. And that just uh, uh, helps the water penetrate the yarn more quickly and thoroughly and the citric acid is going to prepare it to receive the dye and have it stick where it lands. So we're gonna take a thousand mLs of water and pour it into a two and a half inch deep tray with about a half a tablespoon of citric acid. And we're gonna take our rinsed yarn, kind of shake it out, and Lay it in our bath. Now, if we were just doing superwash, you could absolutely speckle it cold and bring it up to heat. But if you want non-superwash to speckle similarly, it needs to be hot first, otherwise the dye will bleed into the background. Now I'm gonna put it in this heater proofer for an hour and a half. I want it to be at about 200 degrees and then we're gonna pull it out and speckle it. But we want to make sure that we have the cleanest, crispest speckles and the no overmixing of the uh, kettle dye. So doing everything at heat will show really the difference of how the bases perform because we're creating an optimal environment for the dye strike to be as quick as possible.
and we are ready to paint. Paint the colors in rainbow order, making sure to start about a half inch to an inch further forward and working the die back so that you get a crisp, a crisper margin. Then we're gonna flip it, turn it back around, paint again, and then add a little bit of speckling over the top just to increase the drama. Now I'm going to remove the zip ties and we have a crisp clean white area for over dyeing and we're going to use the same stock that we used for our kettle dye. And pretty much just like any other form of dyeing, we're going to put our resist colors in rainbow order, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pop back in the proofer, heat set for another hour. It took an entire day for me to set up the knitting machine and crank six swatches that are approximately six by six inches. This process is not fun, but worth it. Here we have our resist technique, superwash and non-superwash side by side. And I want you to look at the difference, not showing as close as it is in real life, but the quality of this black is literally a jet, jet, jet black. And you can see quite a bit of purple in this one. Also, let's look at the tiny little speckles that our resist made on the superwash is really clear. There's like no margin of gray. And when you see these speckles, you see how you've got a clear one and then on either side of that, it's really muddy. And that's because the black migrated under the tie before the dye was able to adhere because dye adheres to superwash much more quickly than non-superwash. And that's why you have Instead of one clean, crisp speckle like we have here, we've got sort of wings on either side of it. And you can see this is our superwash right next to our non-superwash, how dusty and purplish this is, even though they were in the same exact pot. And here again, you can see the edges of the resist have a little halo or a fade of brown. And here the edges of our resist are very crisp and very clean. So here is our side-by-side -side of speckling on superwash versus non-superwash. And I'm pretty sure you can see a really clear difference. When we go in right here, there's tons of back bleeding and super pale um, saturations of these colors. There's no clear speckle, it's just kind of a blurry blob of color. Then we have up here, clear speckles, clear margins, much less back bleeding except on the pink because the pink is a difficult color. And here are our skeins. So that's our superwash skein. That's our non-superwash skein. Here is our kettle dye with a light speckling over the top. And again, we've got quite the clarity of color with our superwash and our speckles over the top, which we can see right here, are very clear and crisp. And none of the speckles made it into our non-superwash. And we have quite a bit of brown out and over mixing of the colors despite being in the same pot. So as you can see over here, we've got um, less diffusion of color, or I should say an overmixing of color, but not really refracting the pinks and the greens and the blues as brightly as we do in the same section on our non-superwash or superwash. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope this was informative, first and foremost, and that it helps you make more educated decisions about the bases you purchase, the uh, dye application style that you pick, and temper your expectations for non-superwash blends. I know we all love superwash as dyers for the way that it takes up dye, but it's not necessarily ideal for people in cold, wet climates like the UK or the Pacific Northwest because 
the rain starts to hit it and that thing's just going to sag and get wet immediately. Whereas the untreated wool will repel the water and is naturally water resistant. It doesn't take the dye as crisp or as clear, but it has a lot of great structural benefits. It has more memory. It fits, uh, you know, a superwash garment can grow up to 30% when you block it. If you'd like to support this type of education, you can donate to my Ko-Fi. I have a book that I'm working on currently um, that is going to be coming out. I don't even know when because it's still in the dying and creating swatch section of the book process, but I am super excited to be able to teach people how to really dial in the techniques and the basis that they choose to get their ultimate fantasy yarn. Have a great day.